This conference will now be recorded. This training is for AIC Task 35 Outdoor Burns. We're going to start by reviewing Fire Prevention Chapter 13 and the Standard Operating Guideline. It has been revised. The first two pages we're going to look at of the SOG have got definitions on them for agricultural, backyard, commercial, construction, demolition, domestic, field, industrial, recreational, and slash burning. It also has the OAR definition for yard debris. I'm not going to review every single one of these. Uh, you need to review them on your own time. We're going to go through a couple of them. We're going to start with agricultural burning. The burning of agricultural waste material generated or used by an agricultural operation on land where the primary purpose is to obtain a profit by raising, harvesting, and selling crops or animals is allowed. Additionally, to qualify as an agricultural burner, the primary living must be earned from far the farm or tax returns filed as a farmer or grower. I know that's going to bring up some questions, and you can review the, you can bring those questions to my office after this. Uh, we're going to continue on. Backyard burning is the burning of organic yard debris. There's that term yard debris. That's why that definition is on here in the SOG. So the definition of yard debris for the state of Oregon is means wood, needle, or leaf materials from trees, shrubs, or plants from the real property to the dwelling of not more than four family living units so long as such debris remains on the property of origin. Once the yard debris is removed from the property of origin, it has become commercial waste. The yard debris is included in the definition of domestic waste. So going back to backyard burning is the burning of organic yard debris. You've got the definition there. On the property of origin, on appropriate burn days, during approved burn hours. Backyard burning materials must be dry to the extent of practicality, loosely stacked and periodically restacked to ensure good combustion, therefore avo avoiding smoldering fires. If the smoke or odor emissions affect others, the fire must be extinguished. Materials prohibited from burning include, but not limited to, garbage, plastic, rubber, petroleum, treated products, and materials that create dense smoke and noxious odors. Backyard burn piles can be no larger than eight by eight by four, and must be a minimum of 50 feet from a structure or other combustible materials. A maximum of two burn piles may be burned at one time, if space allows. All backyard burning fires must be extinguished within the established burn hours. One of the other that we're going to jump over to, and like I said, you'll need to review the rest of these on your own, is recreational fire, which commonly gets mixed up with backyard burning. Recreational fire, campfire, cooking fire, or warming fire is a small occasional less than four times per month fire, which is no larger than three feet in diameter and two feet high, burning only, only dry cut firewood. Recreational fires are allowed year round under a low fire danger level, except if prohibited by city or state code. Recreational fires should be in a permanently affixed outdoor fireplace or a portable commercial fire receptacle. Now we're going to jump from this here to the Oregon State Statute because I want to define open burning on what it means. And it's defined in the OAR section 25 as burning in open outdoor fires. B burning in a burn barrel, and C, any other outdoor burning when combustion, air, 
is not effectively controlled or combustion products are not effectively blended through a stack or chimney. I wanted to bring this up because the definition of outdoor burning is, is pretty broad. It leaves everything open except for stuff that's run through a chimney or a stack. This also includes uh, your commercial uh, fire pits that people use for uh, cooking hot dogs and marshmallows, stuff like that. Back to the SOG. So like I said, there's all these definitions in here. I've covered three of them and the definition for yard debris. Uh, this one right here, burn barrels are prohibited within the air quality zone, DEQ. Uh, that is across the state of Oregon, any area with inside uh, DEQ boundaries, burn barrels are not allowed. Moving down to the actual SOG itself, away from the definitions. Right here, let's go ahead and start at one. KCFD1 personnel are dispatched to a reported burn or notification through other means of possible of, un, of lawful fire. Now I put at the highlight here at the very top, this kind of plays in a little bit later on down through the SOG, but I want it highlighted and up in everybody's mind and thought. If at any time the occupant or owner becomes hostile towards KCFD1 personnel, back out, call for law enforcement to assist and notify the BC on duty. Uh, if a individual that you're talking to becomes verbally hostile, physical, any of that, call for law enforcement. That is your safety. Back out of there. The fire will do its thing. Our thing is, number one, is our safety. 1.1, 1. 1. you arrive on scene. You update the address if needed. That's a very important one. A lot of times you're dispatched to a broad area, uh, a cross street or an intersection. When you do find the fire and it's at a physical address, make sure dispatch is aware of this address. That way, if anything happens, they can send help directly to you. Determine if it is a green day for outdoor burning. Obtain if the address is in their quality zone. So obtaining if it's a green day, the phone number is 541-882-BURN. And that's a common number for everybody. It'll tell you if it's a green day inside and outside the air quality zone. So give that number to the patrons if you're giving them burn regulations so they can check that. Section part of it says obtain if the address is in the air quality zone. A lot of times the paper maps that we have don't show the air quality zone very well. We do have a tool that we should use through our iPads that help us out quite a bit. we we'll come right here to the Klamath County Fire District number one website, main page. Go to the section that says at the top here, about FD1, drop down box, all the way down to fire stations. Go to fire stations. Has a picture of all of our stations. And right underneath that is an interactive web map. So the web map will automatically come up, look like this. You can zoom in, zoom out. This currently shows the boundaries of our fire district in pink. And in these other areas that are shaded, you can see the boundaries of the other fire districts around us. So with this, you can drop down to the center here, this green box circle that says layers list. Go ahead and click it open. And these are all items that are shown on the screen here. We have KC51 fire stations, mutual aid fire stations. I can see Bonanza's there, Kingsley's there, fire districts, which shows the boundaries of ours and then these highlighted areas. And these ones for hydrants that are down here in the different areas. One thing that doesn't click automatically is the air quality zone. It is right here. Go over, click it, and it pops right up inside our fire district. It's a darker pink 
over the top layer of our district. One of the best ways to look at this is to unclick the fire districts and go ahead and close this. Now what's on the screen is all air quality zone. With this being an interactive map, you can go to the base map gallery here, scroll down to imagery, and brings up the map with uh, Google imagery. You can actually see structures, you can see uh, field formations, hills, different things like that. Within the air quality zone, if you have an address where you're at, you can actually zoom in to areas along the boundaries to see if it's inside their quality zone or not. The area that we're looking at right here is the Pine Grove area. All of Pine Grove is within the air quality zone. So that burning in that area needs to follow the regulations for within the air quality zone. Also with the regulations of Klamath County Fire District number one. But this is the best map that gets you the most accurate area and line if you're inside the air quality zone or not. As you scroll out here to the west side of the district, all of running Y was in the air quality zone. Long 140, a lot of this area over here. So use this as a tool. It's on the district webpage. I walked you through how to get to it. If you're in question of anywhere on the air quality zone, if they're in or out, pull up the map and look at it. Let's go back to the SOG. So we've gone through all of that. 1.2, establish contact with the occupant or owner at the incident address. Gain verbal consent to enter the property unless an emergency is noted and exigency is established. So that's a pretty big one. You want to make contact with them. An outdoor burn, even though it's dispatched through 911, is not considered an emergency enough that exigency applies to this where we can enter the property. You need to gain verbal consent. If the property owner says, no, you cannot enter the property, we have other means to take care of that. Get a hold of dispatch, have a law enforcement officer come and meet you. Contact the BC, notify them what's going on. Contact prevention uh, and let them know what's going on. Uh, you know, All those different routes can help you get onto the property. And if they still refuse at that, our next action would be a warrant, which we'd have to run through uh, the court system. And that takes a little bit of time. Majority of the people, if you talk to them, you're kind, cordial, start the process that way, they'll allow you access onto the property. 1.3, gain the occupants and owners full name, phone number, date of birth. So, this information is pretty vital. We need the full name of the, the occupant or the owner that's at the property that you're, you're talking with for your report, for follow-up information, their phone number, and the date of birth. Uh, all of these things allow us access to be able to look them up, contact them if we need to. So make sure that information is added into your report. Obtain if the occupant owner has a valid burn permit or outside established burn windows. Within the air quality zone, Klamath County Air Quality will do certain burn permits at certain times outside the normal burn windows with the two weeks or three weeks in the spring and the fall. Uh, those will have to be approved through Klamath County Air Quality, DEQ, and also within the fire district that it falls into, which all of air quality falls into Klamath County Fire District number one. So we have to approve that too. So if they can establish a burn permit, some of them might show you that they are in the area that's dual covered by Klamath County Fire District number one and ODF. ODF does give out burn permits for certain individuals along that area. We need to verify the permit. If they say they have one, have them produce it for you to show. If they can't produce it, our next steps try to contact the department that we have 
that they say they've established the burn permit through. And you can contact your BC or prevention or ODF if it's uh, through them to verify their permit. 1.4, obtain information from the occupant and owner on the reason for burning. Cooking, ceremonial, warming, debris removal, unauthorized activity. Obtain if the occupant has water available or hand tools. So we're going to start the first one. Ask them why they're burning. If they're burning for cooking, we've gone through the information up here for recreational fires. That state should only be dry cut firewood. Scroll back down here. So if you got an individual that says they're cooking and they are burning trash from inside their residence or outside their residence, that cooking fire doesn't fall under the recreational fire. Uh, so you need to take appropriate actions at that. Obtain if the occupant owner has water available and hand tools. It is the obligation of the property owner or occupant to be able to control and extinguish their fire. If they don't have hand tools or water available, they're not following the guidelines for open burning. 1.5, visually inspect the fire for non-approved items. If non-approved items are found, photos shall be taken and added to into the fire report. Inspect the area around the burn that a clear space around the fire is established. So, we're looking at the fire itself. If we go to an unauthorized burn, burn complaint, we need to visually see the fire itself. Don't stand out at the roadway that the occupant owner says, I'm putting it out, it's all fine, no issues or problems. Ask them politely to come in and actually visualize the fire to make sure that there is a control line around it of bare soil and they've got proper tools to extinguish it and they're burning the proper stuff. Now in this section here, photos shall be taken and added into the report for non-approved items. What we're going to do is I'm going to go into the emergency reporting and I pulled up one of my recent unlawful uh, unauthorized burning fires. This fire, this report has been completed and has gone through all the steps. Information is added, a narrative is added. Under the people section, you want to make sure you add their information, that information that you gain. In the narrative, obviously, you want to add a good narrative of what you saw. Uh, it can be pretty simple to more extensive. And then into the file section. This is the section here that you're going to add your photos to. You go down to the section that said upload. Your files need to be uploaded into it. And what I'm showing you here is one of recent fires we had where I took some photos, showed some stuff that they were not burning uh, legally, uh, items they shouldn't be doing, shouldn't have a burn barrel, shouldn't have garbage in it. Uh, different things like that. I documented photo through this photo of these items. We can follow up on it. Kind of got an overall picture of what they're burning on these different photos. Kind of gives you and walks you through what they've got going on there. And then I also add the notice of violation that I've given them. It's in here, it's attached to the fire report. Scan it in and add it to this section here. That way it's all tied together. If for some reason this report needs to go to law enforcement or to air quality or to code officials or to the courts, this whole report can be sent in this way. Back to the SOG 1.6. Educate the occupant and owner of the current burning regulations. If you have the outdoor burning regulations trifold piece of pamphlet 
in your engine or equipment or captain's folder, pull one out, give it to them, walk them through it, explain to them why their burning is not allowed, if they're burning illegal items, why they're not approved, educate them on the proper way to contact the burn number, so make sure it's a burn day, it's a good day to burn, Eva you know, evaluate, you know, if it's windy or not. These type of items is what you should be educating the occupant and owner on. So when they do go to burn the next time, they have the proper information to do it correctly. 1.7, if the fire is found to be non-approved fire, a verbal request to extinguish this fire shall be given to the owner of occupant. Always give them the first right of refusal to extinguish their fire when you're going to ask for it to be extinguished. If the occupant owner is unable to extinguish the fire or the fire is too large or it is unsafe, the fire district will be extinguished. The fire will be extinguished by KCFD1 personnel. If they are unable to maintain their fire or extinguish it or take care of it, it's too large or it becomes unsafe, we need to be putting it out. We need to be putting out diplomatically. Continuing on in the SOG, section two, follow the prevention SOG 11 notice postings for the following. And we'll go through this on items, uh, times that you should be posting, giving them a notice, and why we give a notice. So we're gonna start with the highlighted areas uh, because it's very important, need to note that. Photos shall be taken of the incident and added into the report for all notices given for an open burning violation. So if you are going to give this individual a notice for open burn violation, Photos need to be added to the report. They shall be added into it and, and taken of the incident. Uh, that is very important. So following the SOG, kind of going down here, some of the things that you can give them a notice for open burning violation. The individual is burning unauthorized materials. That's a pretty big one. The authorized materials, We've gone through that at the beginning of the beginning of this chapter here. The individual becomes hostile and or law enforcement is involved. If you have to get law enforcement involved, if the individual is hostile, narrate the incident with photos, a good narrative, information from the officers, information of people involved, and photos. All of those things play into this. The fire is beyond the means of the individual to take care of and KCFD1 extinguishes the fire. And this is discretionary. If we go and they are unable to extinguish the fire and it's small and you as an officer decide that you are not gonna give them a notice at this time because it doesn't fall in there, any of the other items, that is fine, but if we have to put the fire out because they're unable to contain it or meet some of these other criteria, we should be giving them a notice. Burning after hours or outside the burning windows allowed. That's pretty obvious. Fail to control the burn. And that's a pretty big one. Uh, anytime you have a fire that has escaped uh, because they did not have the means to take care of it, or they're burning in off times, different things like that. They failed to control the burn. They should be receiving a notice posting to start the process for follow-up on the prevention side. Notice copies will be given to the occupant and owner. Try to give them a copy of it. It's important that they have written copy of what we're giving them. Uh, and it's also a piece of paper that's got the district's contact information. They can follow up on it too if they want to. If you're unable to post it with the individual, the occupant or owner, the, the notice will be posted to the main door of the address. 
the non-posted copy of the notice will be forwarded to the prevention division and bureau. And that's a big one there is the paperwork needs to be funneled back to prevention. Prevention will do all the follow-ups on this. So uh, make sure paperwork is comes through. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the actual SOG Chapter 11, Under Prevention, Standard Operating Guide. It's got three sections in it. We're just going to go through the first section of it. Uh, the background of it, the notice form is combination form to be used for the following items, open burning violations, fire and life safety system, fire department access issues. And the reason this form has been modified, and, and we'll go through the form uh, here in just a minute after we run through the procedures, is it allows prevention to follow up and correct things that could potentially have issues or problems with the district. Burning violations that could become worse, uh, you know, besides DEQ and air quality, if they get out of control. Fire and life safety systems, they're very important throughout the fire district to make sure that they're in operating order to work properly for fire and life safety. And then the last one we're putting information on this form was for fire department access. And that is, we have areas within our district that we have difficulties getting apparatus into. We're trying to mark those areas. We're trying to ratify and fix some of those areas so we can properly take care of that area. But that's the three parts of this SOG. We're only gonna deal with open burning violations at this time. And we're just gonna read through and go through these pretty quick. A violation of open burning regulations has been found. If the patron is aggressive or violent, we've already covered that. Leave the address, call for law enforcement. Verbal notification of the violation with the reason why it is a violation. Talking to the property owner uh, and occupant, letting them know what the violation is, why it is, so they can correct it for later on, and that they're not, you know, surprised when this is given to them. Retrieve the notice form out of the officer's clipboard, fill it out completely and legibly. Make sure it's legible. We need to be able to follow up on it. Uh, if we can't read the name or the phone number, it does not work very well for us. Take photos of the violation and add to the fire report. Anytime you're giving out this form, you will take photos and add them to the fire report. Give the patron the top white copy. Uh, it should be white. Um, if it's not, uh, just give them a copy of it so they have it. Inform them of the possible contacts by KCFD1, Klamath County Air Quality, and or DEQ. Uh, there is follow-up on this, like I've said. We might follow up. Air quality or DEQ might also follow up on it too, depending on how egregious the act is that they're doing. Scan the form into the fire report. I uh, showed you that when we went through ERS. and Attach that in there. And the bottom yellow copy, send to fire prevention. So we're gonna look at the form. We've got it pulled up here. This is the new notice form after this training and the SOG is 100% approved, this will be out in your apparatus. It's gonna be a full page copy. Like I said, it's got those other three areas. It's got our contact information here so they can follow up on their end. We're gonna talk about the form here for open burning violations. So we're gonna stop and talk at, excuse me, we're gonna start at the top of the form. Got notice. So each section in this area here, the very top, needs to be filled out. You need to fill out date, you need to fill out time, you need to fill out incident number, you need to fill out the shift that's on duty that's giving this notice out so we can follow up on the shift. The owner RP's name, first and last name, legible. Owner RP number, a good contact number that we can reach them at any time. Make it legible. The incident address, a lot of times the incident address is different than what is dispatched. Make sure that this one is correct. 
on the notice of the incident address that you're giving it to uh, the individual, the occupant owner, RP or whatever, make sure that they, that address matches where they're at. Also make sure that address matches in your fire reports. Business name, if this was a business, attach that. And weather conditions, it's what you see outside. Uh, if the weather conditions, as I'm looking out the window right now, weather conditions are clear with a few clouds, uh, temperature feels warm. If you've got an accurate temperature, you could throw it in there. Uh, if it's windy, do a quick guesstimate of what the wind speed is. Uh, just something to go, hey, maybe you shouldn't have been burning because of weather conditions. So down here, this is a quick, simple section for open burn violation. We wanted to make this simple. So you mark with an X or checkbox your initials if it's a closed season. Burning after hour, designated hours. Checkbox, X, your initials, whatever you want to put in there. Failure to control a fire, same thing. And prohibited materials. This one here, we've expanded a little bit. Want you to, uh, you know, just give us a rough idea. We're going to get more information from your fire report once it's completed, but this gets us started. And then photos of the incident. Anytime you're giving this form, yes needs to be marked on this. And right down here underneath this, uh, this is information for the property owner RP. Uh, in accordance with Klamath County Fire District Number One Ordinance 19-1, an escalating fee starting at $100 at the second offense, 200 to the third, 300 to the fourth, or more, gives them an idea that they could be receiving a monetary fee for these burn violations. Uh, one of the things I'm going to show you is Ordinance 19-1. Under the fire prevention schedule fee, we've got the residential commercial alarms, but the one we're dealing with right here is unlawful fire fee. <clears throat> Excuse me, it starts at $100. Unlawful fires are considered to be any burning outside of the allowed burn dates, times, or any burning of prohibited materials. An individual who ignites and maintains an unlawful fire will receive a warning the first time, an individual and the warning comes from you, you're giving them a verbal, hey, this is not during the burn time period, are you burning illegal materials or not allowed materials? You're giving them a verbal warning. Keeping track of the warnings and the amount of fires, prevention takes care of that online, you do not need to do that. So any individual who ignites and maintains an unlawful fire twice will be assessed a fund lawful fire fee. Any additional unlawful fire fees will be assessed on an escalating fee of an additional $100 per occurrence. Example, third unlawful fire will result in a fee of $200, fourth will be a fee of $300, and et cetera, and will continue to escalate per $100 for each one until they stop doing the unlawful fires. Again, that is something that's tracked by prevention. You on the line do not need to worry about that. Continue to go to these unlawful fires. Give them the information. If you've been there several times, continue to do the exact same process every time for consistency. When we're not consistent is when we can get ourselves in trouble. But again, this is just giving you some information on unlawful fires. Uh, let you know what we're doing on the prevention side. This notice form, it'll be going out soon. We've covered SOG chapter 13, SOG chapter 11, which all ties together. We've discussed the process is after the fire has been taken care of and the definitions we've gone through at the beginning. I've showed you how to access some things through ERS to make your reports better, how to add your photos into it through uploaded files, the air quality map we've discussed, 
We've discussed some definitions through OAR, the, the OARs. So at this time, give you a little bit of homework. I want you to go to your apparatus that you're on, and go through the clipboard, make sure that there is a notice form or uh, all of the forms that need to be in there. Make sure that that stuff's up to date. If you're not familiar with the form, go through it. Have your captain or uh, other training individuals in the station go through it with you. Another piece of homework. The next burn complaint you, your crew goes on, ask the captain or the AIC in charge if you can handle the call. And that's from the beginning, the time you step off the apparatus, greeting the individual, looking at the fire, going through the process. Ask to handle the whole thing, writing the report, uh, and any follow-ups that you feel that you need to have. Take you that step, an opportunity to step into that role and start getting experienced with it. And then go through all these items that I've done. Show them how to access the air quality map. Grab your iPad out of your apparatus. Open it up. Look at it. It's simply through our own website. Um, like I said, this tool has got several different layers. You can use this training not only for air quality, but you can do it for response areas of members of the district or stations of the district. So go ahead and take a look at it. Use these tools. If you have any questions, contact myself in the prevention department, training division, your BC, your captain. Any of those individuals should be able to walk you through most of these steps that we've done. At this time, it concludes AIC Task 35, Outdoor Burns. Thank you.